Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there. And now we're going to continue our conversation about Bordeaux. Big, 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 big wine producing region in France. Not just expensive stuff, stuff that, you know, you can get good, solid quality Bordeaux for price at the pricing that you're paying for. New World stuff, you know, $15 a bottle, $18 a bottle, $20 a bottle sort of stuff. Okay. Hi. I'm Rob Moshine from Austin, Texas. I love to write and blog about wine at my website, www.austinwineguy.com, and I am the Austin Wine Guy, and proud to be also one of the wine buffs, and you can find more at my website or at todaysbordeaux.com. Welcome to Wine and Dine Radio. I'm Lynn Crelo Chamberlain. Hi there, this is Andreas Larson. Hi, this is John Capon. My name is Mathur Jaffrey. Hi, my name is Heike Platter. I'm from the Alto Adige region or Südtirol. Hi, my name is Paul Dolan. I am absolutely passionate about growing organic and biodynamic fruit for our wines. Hello, my name is Lorena Garcia. Hello, my name is Fritz Maytag. This is Joy Fox. I'm the author of Foodie Fight. Hi, this is Lydia Mandave, founder of 29 Cosmetics. Cheers, this is Rob Barnett, CEO and founder of VinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Today we're starting the first half of Wine and Dine talking about Bordeaux, Bordeaux wines. And I don't want to be cliche about it. We are going into the fourth quarter here and... Not only do Bordeaux wines make fantastic holiday pairings, but instead of your New World Merlots, Cabernets, Sauvignon Blancs, and any dessert wine for that matter, Bordeaux can easily fit the bill with a totally different flavor and an ar- even aroma profile and, and weight in your mouth experience that you might find extremely interesting and a welcome change and joining us to begin the hour this week is Rob Moshine who I want to give you a little bit of background on him because he has a very interesting interesting uh, career he was born in Beverly Hills and while he was working on his bachelor's in economics from UCLA he studied at Pembroke College in Cambridge University, where he was introduced to First Growth Bordeaux and Grand Cru Burgundies. When he was done with that degree, he went to Southwestern University and graduated at the top of his class with a degree in law and worked in a legal practice in LA for many, many years before moving to Austin, Texas, of all places. I don't know what brought him from L.A. to Austin, but he'll probably tell us that since I'm prompting this. 
But today he's joining us because he is working with the Bordeaux Wine Council as one of their, quote-unquote, le wine buffs. And there's a really cool campaign that is, uh, this is, I don't know, this is the second or third year, but uh, 100 wines that are $35 and under. And we will have links up to enjoybordeaux.com as well as Rob's website. His acronym is Austin Wine Guy, the Austin Wine Guy. And I want to, before I bring up the mic and let him talk, he's probably dying that I haven't brought up the mic yet. I want to read a quote that he has at the bottom of his emails that he sends out, send out what I think is really cool. I love this. Just the thought of this is exciting to me. This is by Gerald Hamilton from The Way It Was With Me. Can you imagine this? When I was young and living in Paris, champagne was relatively inexpensive, so I used to drink a half bottle in the morning and another half bottle at six in the evening. I found it did me a world of good. And oh my gosh, Rob, to have that opportunity in life. But when you were attending Pembroke College, the price of wines was, was you know, uh, it was a lot better than it is now. But you were a college student, so you were probably broke, right? Yes, <laughs> I was. But it was much more affordable. Luckily for me at, at Pembroke, uh, they had the largest wine cellar in Cambridge at the time, uh, 35,000 bottles going back literally 200 years, and it was free. All I had to do was <gasps> sign up. It was free? It was free? Every Friday night, uh, the master of college would hold a wine tasting in his rooms, and it was really his excuse to go down and raid the cellar and, and open some cool things and, and try the wine. Um, it was free to students. All you had to do was, was sign up on Wednesday, and so you knew how many bottles to pull. And uh, dinner was Friday night, and you had to attend, and it was coat and tie, and it looked just like Harry Potter without floating candles or owls, but otherwise <laughs> it really was a big Gothic room with the huge portraits and stone walls and all of that. And then we'd go up to his cozy little rooms, and yes, uh, I remember the first wine he opened when I was 19 years old, and it was legal to drink in England then at 19. And it was uh, Batard Marche. And I thought, oh, Batard, bastard, ha, ha, ha. You know, very funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then realized, oh, 1968, Grand Cru Batard Marche. It was, it was an aha moment for wine for me, and it just stuck with me the rest of my life. So I, I thought the first Friday was so cool. I went every Friday while I was there. Oh, but, my yeah, wine, gosh. The wine was, was much more affordable. I mean, I'd love to tell the yeah. story that <clears throat> I, I, I couldn't afford a case of the 82 Lafitte Rock Shield on release because it was expensive. It was $59 a bottle. Oh, wow. So I had to settle for a case of the Lynch Bage because that was only $20 a bottle. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So... T so tell me, how what is how did you get involved with the the Bordeaux Wine Council as being one of their wine buffs? Well, uh, the program actually is is in its third year now. Okay. Um, you weren't sure we are now in our third year. Okay. I was approached uh, before they kicked off the campaign three years ago uh, by um, someone who had been a follower of my blogs and uh, had been in contact with them. Trying, They were trying to find people for the campaign, and he said, would you be interested? And I was like, sure, <laughs> why not? And um, I got on the phone with the, uh, the people in New York who were handling uh, the, C the account, CIDB, the Bordeaux Wine Council account, for uh, the Today's Bordeaux program, and um, here I am, three years later, loving it. It's just really been, been a lot of fun. When I talked to M Megan Wig, she said that the the thirty five dollars and under was kind of geared towards the millennial generation, and I mean I'm a baby boomer generation. I'm not millennial, and I would assume that you're baby boomer generation. So is this? So should we not? We should take that with a grain of salt. That it's it's really for anybody and everybody who is not familiar with Bordeaux. And I was just learning, or in fact, you just want to learn more about Bordeaux. Well, it, it's both, really. Um, it, 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 the point is that Bordeaux had discovered, and I think it was correct about three, four years ago, that the perception in the United States of Bordeaux was that it was strictly for 
owed rich people to drink at their country clubs, and nobody could afford it, and really nobody understood it. And if you weren't, you know, a wealthy 75-year-old with deep pockets in a big cellar, nobody drank it. Okay. And that's just simply not true. And so the campaign has been really trying to introduce Bordeaux to anyone who would be interested in drinking Cabernet or Merlot or Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. As you said before, I, I love to tell people, if, if you're willing to spend $25, $30, $35 for California Cab or Merlot, you know, or 15 or $20 for Sauvignon Blanc from California, absolutely give Bordeaux a try. It's the same thing, only different. You know, you're, you're exploring what's really the heritage of the California wine industry, if you yes. look at it historically, of course. Yes, yes. That all the Bordeaux varietals were originally brought to California. You know, when I have mentioned that exact same sort of uh, approach to people, without exception, everyone is blown away by how wonderful the Bordeaux wines are because they're they're lighter. They're generally speaking across the board lower in alcohol, so uh, you don't feel you well you don't get as tra- you don't get trashed and you don't feel so heavy and and they go better with food rather than just a a wow wine that you have when you're like a cocktail before dinner. They, they go better with food because they're lighter and better acidity. Well, and they're designed to go with food. Let's be honest. The French have really just considered wine as, as a food group for, you know, six, eight hundred years. And Bordeaux's been doing wine for a thousand years. Like I tell people when I teach classes, they've kind of figured it out by now. Um, yeah. And, uh, Yes, absolutely. Uh, California wines tend to be a little, I call them Johnny One Note. They're very fruit forward. They're very heavy. They're difficult to, to pair with food. And they're really not, they're not pleasant to drink a lot of, in my personal opinion. I mean, there are certain yeah. exceptions, of course, and I'm, I'm just making some big generalizations here. Yes. But Bordeaux wines, they are elegant. They're lighter. They are designed to go with food, and um, they're very satisfying to most most consumers when they when they give finally step up and give them a try. So, you were you also tasting this? As I understand, there were like two hundred and thirty six different Bordeaux wines or something for this final two thousand twelve one hundred wines. Two hundred and eighty six. Oh, yes. oh, whoa! Two hundred and eighty six wines. Yes, we had two eight-hour days. Well, actually, a seven-hour day. We had two seven-hour days with a with a, about an hour for lunch to plow through almost three hundred wines to whittle them down. Whoa, are you happy with the hundred that you're presenting to people? I am. I, I am. Um, they're basically all very solid wines. They're they're well made. They really deliver value for the dollar. Um, you know, you, you can't judge them as you would, for example, you know, Premier Cru and, and the really big, you know, elegant, amazing, complex wines that, that, you know, we're used to from, you know, 30, 40 years ago. But because it's a different world now, those wines are unaffordable for the average yeah. American. Right. But there are wonderful small producers who are really doing well-crafted, well-made wines. They really care about what they're doing. And we've also been blessed with two fabulous vintages back-to-back, 2009 and 2010. And you can't go wrong with wine from either of those vintages or no. I'm so excited about this, uh, these, this conversation this week on Bordeaux because uh, people can do some serious planning with their upcoming holiday parties and family gatherings and that sort of thing. I mean, don't let the French on the label bother you because even the labels have changed so much that the average American can read it. Well, I would like to say, Rob Moshine, it's been really our pleasure meeting you this week on Wine and Dine. Thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Rob, so very much. This will be part of next week's show. So if if you don't hear from me from by like the middle of the week, email me and say, hey, Lynn, send me the audio file link. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to be able to, um, yeah, love to be able to put it, put it up on my, my blog and take a listen to it and share it with my friends and Twitter friends and Facebook friends and all that good stuff. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so very much. Pleasure was mine. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> I think he was clearing his throat a lot. 
he must be allergic to dairy or something like me, which happens to me. Dot com. But he he didn't answer me. You know, I kind of set that question up about how did you, you know, what was the reason you moved from L.A. to Austin? I bet you it was something to do with his legal practice, but I, I don't know. So anyway, always more to, more to ask, more to learn than we have time for. Okay, let me set this up. And then we're going to move on to Alaska. Greg Wild. Tu es mon, ma, mon amour. Tu es mon amour. Mon amour. Now you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iWineRadio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes radio icon and scroll down to news and talk directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there. <laughs>